All right. Hello and welcome everybody to another physics video lecture. Today we are going to keep talking about electricity and move on to parallel circuits. Okay, so last class we saw that there are two types of circuits. The ones we talked about last class were series circuits. Uh, if you haven't watched this video, you should go back and watch this video first. Um, a series circuit is a circuit that is one continuous loop. So again, electricity is electrons moving. Um, in the negative end of a battery, you have lots of electrons. And in the positive end, you have very few electrons. Uh, if you connect them with a conductor, the electrons will go from the negative end to the positive end. And if they go through anything in between, uh, they will light it up or charge it or turn on your toaster or whatever the electricity is doing, right? A parallel circuit is different from a series circuit because parallel circuits are not one continuous loop. But look at this closely. When this electricity comes out, this wire, it goes through the first light bulb and then immediately into the second light bulb and then goes back to the battery. Here, what we have is the electricity and the wire coming out, going into the first bulb, but then it splits into a completely separate loop, okay? Now this has its advantages. The big advantage here is that series loops, although very cheap and easy to make, if one of these light bulbs goes out or dies, that is like putting an off switch in the middle of your circuit. If one of these light bulbs goes out, all of your light bulbs goes out, right? Whereas here, if this light bulb goes out, well, that electricity can still completely flow through all of the other bulbs and back to the uh, positive, end, back to the battery, okay? So this is what we're talking about today, parallel circuits. A little more complicated to make, but um, much more efficient uh, in terms of, I mean, you wouldn't want to wire your house like this. This would mean that if a light went off in your bathroom, um, every other light in your house would turn off, which not great. All right, so what do you need to know about parallel circuits? Parallel circuits are current flowing in many different loops. So each resistor is on its own loop. They have more than one path. And unlike a series circuit, we have different information about the current, the voltage, and the resistance. So here's what we know. Number one, in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same everywhere in the circuit. This is different from a series circuit. If you remember, in a series circuit, the current was the same everywhere because it was all one loop. In a parallel circuit, it is the voltage that is the same everywhere. That's very important. The current is what adds up to the total. So if you remember from series circuits, the voltage and the current have switched. They're different, okay? So in a parallel circuit, every resistor gets a little bit of that current, okay? And the bigger the resistor, the more current it gets. And all the currents are gonna add up to the total current. Now, those have just switched. The, the, the big thing here is probably the resistance, and this is what throws people for a loop. In a parallel circuit, the resistance are reciprocals that add up. And what this looks like, and this equation is on your equation sheet, is this. A reciprocal is one divided by a number. So one divided by the total resistance equals one divided by the first resistor plus one divided by the second resistor, and so on. And I'll show you how to calculate that, okay? Here we go. Okay, so this is just another way of seeing the two compared. Again, a series circuit, much simpler. All you do to find the total resistance is add up the resistors, very easy. Here, we have to add up their reciprocals, and I'll show you this math in just a second. You can notice that these two things switch. In a series circuit, the current is constant everywhere, and the voltages get used up and add up to a total. In a parallel circuit, the voltage is constant everywhere, and the current get add up to a total. Here's how I like to remember this. A series circuit is one loop, right? So I remember that an I is one, right? Whereas a parallel circuit, it splits into many different uh, loops. Here, voltage V splits. That's how I remember that. I know it's crazy, but I'll mention it a few more times and hopefully that'll click. So here's what a parallel circuit looks like. Um, again, you have your resistors. Instead of being in one big loop, 
each one of these resistors gets its own separate loop. And this is why we call them parallel, because when you draw them, all the resistors are in their own loops parallel to each other. This is the battery, same as before. And if there's more than one battery, you just add them up. Right. Again, the circuit splits and there's three separate loops. So what is total resistance? Um, okay, ignore this for right now. All right, so how do we find the total resistance? I'm gonna, sh these, all the steps are written down here. So here we have four or three resistors. Each one is four ohms. So we start with our equation which is one divided by the total resistance equals one divided by R1 plus one divided by R2 plus one divided by R3. Now we just have to plug our resistances into the equation. This gives us R1 equals one divided by four plus one divided by four plus one divided by four. I plug the four resistors into my equation. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add these up. One quarter plus one quarter plus one quarter equals three quarters, which is 0.25 plus 0.25 plus 0.25. Those are three quarters, mm -hmm. and that gives us 0 0.75, which is also known as three quarters. Now, this is what we have now. Now we have one divided by RT equals 0 0.75. Okay, so here, in order to get RT out of the bottom of this equation, you have to multiply both sides by RT and then divide both sides by 0 0.75. Real quick, this is what that looks like. I have one divided by RT is equal to 0 0.75. To get this by itself, I have to multiply both sides by RT. RT divided by RT cancels. I bring down the one over here, and now I have 0 0.75 times RT. And now I need to get RT by itself, so I'm gonna divide both sides by 0 0.75. And so now I have RT equals one divided by 0 0.75 is what I have right here. Hmm? Hmm. This is a little swapping math. We also call this the butterfly method. Really, you're moving this from the bottom of the fraction up to the top of this side, and you're moving this to the bottom of this side, okay. which is a little shorthand. This math works out great. I'm going to erase this. Now, that we have RT equals one divided by 0 0.75. One divided by 0 0.75 equals 1.33 ohms. Now this is an interesting place to see this. In a series circuit, if we were to add up three four ohm resistors, it would be four plus four plus four, which is 12. So in a series circuit, the more resistors, the more resistance. In a parallel circuit, each one of these is four ohms and my total resistance is only 1.3 ohms. This is less than any of these resistors. And this is because when you add more resistors to a parallel circuit, like here, if I added a fourth one, let's say I added another one to this, okay? What happens? Well, now I have one divided by RT equals one. And if you do that same butterfly method, now my total resistance, oh, I wanted to add this to this. My total resistance goes down. So this is very important. The more resistors in parallel, the smaller the total resistance. And that's the opposite of a series circuit. So you'll see questions like that. Which one of these has the most resistance? All you gotta do is look at it. If they're in parallel, the more resistors in parallel, the lower the resistance. The more resistors in series, the higher the resistance. That's a very important fact. Now last class we saw that our Ohm's law Current equals voltage divided by resistance. If we multiply both sides by R, we get this equation. Voltage equals current times resistance. V equals I times R. And this is where we get our VIR charts, which we can still use. And they are super, super important with parallel circuits because most of the time, all this super complicated math right here, sometimes we can avoid doing this just by using a VIR chart. So let me show you what I mean. Again, it's the same as before. We have three columns, one for voltage, one for current, one for resistance. And we have one row for each resistor and one row for the total resistance. And the important thing here is that you get the V, I, and R in the correct order because 
Voltage equals current times resistance. All right? Okay. So let's work on a problem together. All right, so here we see that we have uh, 40 volts coming out of our battery. So that's our total voltage, like before. So I'm putting 40 volts in my total voltage. And I have three resistors. The first one is five ohms. The next one is 20 ohms. And the last one is four ohms ohms okay now you may be looking at this and thinking oh man i gotta do all of that math right here one divided by five plus one divided by 20 plus one divided by four and you can and you should be able to do that it's really not that hard if you go back watch those steps you can easily see how to do it but the vir chart actually makes this a little easier because check this out we know that in a series circuit a series circuit is one loop which means the current is the same everywhere. But in a parallel circuit, it splits into multiple paths, so we can remember that the voltage is the same everywhere. Meaning, if the total voltage is 40 volts, the voltage at resistor one is 40 volts, the voltage at resistor two is 40 volts, and the voltage at resistor three is 40 volts. They're all 40 volts. Mm. The voltage is the same everywhere in parallel. And I remember that voltage equals current times resistance. So now you have two numbers in each column, huh? So we can just figure out what these currents are. Look at this. I have five times blank equals 40, which would be 40 equals I times five. I want the I by itself, that's what I'm looking for. So I divide both sides by five. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and this gives me a current of 40 divided by 5, which is 8. Check the calculator. Do this. And I can do the same thing for the rest of them. What times 20 equals 40? Did you say 2 amps? Ding, 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 ding. Very good job. And then last but not least, what times 4 equals 40? Well, hopefully you remember the 10 times 4 equals 40. Oh! And now, all of my currents add up. So to find my total current, I go 8 plus 2, which is 10, plus 10, which is 20 amps. Ooh. And now blank times 20 is 40. And you know what? Yeah, you see where I'm going with this? 2 times 20 is 40. Now, to double check this, we go back and we add these up to make sure that we get two ohms. And I've already put this in a calculator so as to not spend too much time messing around with this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go. There we go. So here we go. Should have made this smaller to start off with. It's okay. This is the time that I saved. <laughs> All right, so look at this. One divided by five plus one divided by 20 plus one divided by four equals 0 0.5. Notice, come on back now, notice I use parentheses whenever I'm adding or subtracting or multiplying fractions. Very important. I can now go here, hit enter, and if I go 1 divided by my answer, which is 0 0.5, I get 2 ohms. Same thing I got here. Do you see the amount of heartache and work that this beautiful chart can save you. It really is amazing. All right, let's look at another one. Okay, so now let's look at one that's slightly different. Okay, so here I know my total voltage is six volts. So that is my total voltage. And I know the current going into my first resistor is two amps and the current going into my second resistor is one amp. I will need to find everything else out about this circuit, okay? Well, guess what? The voltages are the same everywhere. Six volts here, six volts here. And again, I'm gonna say this a million times. In a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere because this one's straight. And in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same because it splits. That's really good, I'm proud of that. Now, 
Voltage equals current times resistance. Blank times two is three, or sorry, blank times two is six. Well, six divided by two is three. Three times two is six. Blank times one is six. Hopefully you know that six times one is six. I take my currents, I add them up to get my total current. Two plus one is three amps. Blank times three is six. Very good. Two times three is six. And again, if we go back and I use my calculator, which I already, oh, I haven't put this in there yet, so let me go over here. So if I take my calculator and I clear this out, okay, and I go parentheses, one divided by three, plus parentheses one divided by six. That gives me, again, 0 0.5. And the same thing we saw last time, if you're wondering how I'm getting this equation, now I have one divided by RT equals 0 0.5. Okay, again, I swap these two, which means that RT equals one divided by 0 0.5. Just like we saw earlier, I'm multiplying this RT over to this side. I'm dividing this 0 0.5 over here. So they swap, and one divided by 0 0.5, we already saw this, but you wanna see it again? I'll show you the magic trick. One divided by 0 0.5 is two, which you would have gotten had you done that math to start off with. Oh, oh, and now you can answer any question you want. What's the voltage at the second resistor? Six volts. How much current does the first resistor use? Two amps. What's the total resistance? Two ohms. Okay, even on a question where you don't have to find the voltage, if you just do this first, it saves you so much time and it triple checks that everything is correct. All right, another, another, sure thing, whatever you guys want. All right, so this one, we don't know the voltage at all. So this one, we only know the voltage on the last resistor. Okay, so I know the first resistor is 10 ohms. I know that the second resistor is 15 ohms. And I know the voltage in this second resistor is 30 volts. Oh, pause the video. See if you can solve this. Did you fill it in? Are you good? Let's see if you're right. Did you remember that your voltage is the same everywhere? <laughs> yes. That means that the voltage in the first resistor is 30 volts and the total voltage is also 30 volts. Again, voltage equals current times resistance. 10 times blank equals 30. 10 times three equals 30. 15 times blank equals 30. Two times 15 equals 30. How do you do that mathematically? 30 equals I times 15. You want I by itself. You do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing both sides by 15. 15 divided by 15 is one, and this gives me a current of 30 divided by 15, which is two amps. Now, you take your currents, and each current adds up to the total. Three plus two equals five amps. Blank times five equals 30. Six times five equals 30. Or another way to say that is 30 divided by five is six. There's everything you need. Any question? These things are fun, I enjoy them. Let's do one more. All right, so we have, we have four amps coming straight out of the battery. So my total voltage is four amps. My first resistor is 20 ohms. My second resistor is 20 ohms. Oof, okay. So this one, we actually have to figure out what the total resistance is, because I don't know anything about the voltage and I don't have two numbers on any row. Okay, you got me. We actually got to do this one. So what did I do for y'all? I have this calculator right here. Woo! Yeah, there you go, okay. 1 divided by 20 plus 1 divided by 20 equals 0 0.1. That means 1 divided by RT 
equals 0 0.1, right? 1 divided by r1 plus 1 divided by r2 equals this. Okay, now I got to get this rt up where it needs to be. So again, so you see all this, I'm going to take rt out of the bottom. I'm going to multiply rt on both sides, right? This is being divided. Always multiply by the number on the bottom. RT divided by RT is 1. I bring this down. Now I have 1 equals 0 0.1 times RT. Again, I want RT by itself. So I have to do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. And I'm dividing by 0 0.1. So 1 divided by 0 0.1 is equal to RT. So I go answer 1 divided by answer gives me 10. Okay? Yay! So that means RT, my total resistance, is 10 ohms. And from here, it's a cakewalk. Voltage equals current times resistance. 10 times 4 is 40 volts. I know my voltage is the same everywhere. So this is 40 volts. And this is 40 volts. And now, 20 times what? His volt is equal to 40. 40 divided by 20 gives me 2 amps. 20 times what equals 40? Well, it's the same as right there. 40 divided by 20 is 2 amps. And as you can see, 2 plus 2 is 4. Now, if you wanted to think about this retroactively, you could think, well, if I know that the total current was 4 amps and that both of these resistors are the same, that means that they're going to use the same amount of current, so I could have just divided this by 2 and realized these were both going to be 2. But, hey, we did it for real, guys. We did the whole thing. All right, there is four examples of a parallel circuit. Again, the thing you need to remember about parallel circuits. Number one, they are multiple loops that split up, that look parallel to each other. They are not in one big row. They fork, all right? They split. Number two. The voltage is the same everywhere in a parallel circuit because they split. The current adds up in a parallel circuit and the resistances, the reciprocals add up, all right? Remember that because the reciprocals are what adds up, the more resistors you have in parallel, the less resistance you have. And the big benefit from a parallel circuit is if this resistor goes down, this one is still able to complete a full circuit. So if these were both light bulbs, if this light bulb died, this one would still be working, okay? All right, guys, that's it. If you have any questions, please email me or find me on Zoom after school for tutoring. And have a great day.